sun up. Rise and grind and greet your day. Put something new in that coffee cup. Live your life the 6S way. Stay safe, stay sane, stay sexy. Try that new morning routine. And follow your curiosity with RK. It's too early for that note. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday. My brain is still off, so I'm going to be waking up nice and slow because I also have to go to the gym after today's stream. So it's going to be it's going to be a lot today. Um, I currently have a million and a half tabs open on my computer on the other monitor, other than the one I'm using for this because I'm in the process of writing a very long script that I need to film tomorrow. And it's going to be all about Ron DeSantis and his war on Disney. So I'm doing the Disney versus DeSantis. I'm going to do it as a big, big, long video. So we'll see how that turns out. We'll see how that turns out, y'all. And for now, I'm um, just waking up kind of nice and slow. Ooh. I'm going to say hello to everyone and show you guys some cool stuff. And then I figure today... Um, you know, yesterday, just for fun, we were playing with some chatbots and creating creating little choose-your-own-adventure games on ChatGPT, and I figured we could try that and see how it turns out, um, because I thought uh, it was funny, so <laughs> we could see how that turns out and uh, what we can do with that. Good morning, Kelly. Kelly's got two, two beer steins right there going cheers. And so does Go Fohawk yourself, so cheers to both of you. Um, I don't know why I'm so exhausted this morning, but I gotta get it together, because I gotta get to the gym. So, that's coming soon. Good morning, Kat. Good to see you. Good morning, Cool Gamer. Good morning, Devastatia. Good morning, Kate. Good morning, Valerie. Good morning, Liza Lou. Good morning, Brittany. Oh, I sound echoey. Hold on. Let me check my microphone. Oh, yep, yeah, there's a microphone issue. Hold on. Where is it? I'm wondering if... Hold on. I think maybe my microphone's not plugged in properly. One second, guys. Thank you. Is that better? I think I think it just wasn't plugged in properly. Is that? Let me know if that is better. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are all saying that. <laughs> it's just, my mage studios is you sound like an adult in peanuts. Kelly says I'm very muffled. Okay. Um, is that better, guys? Is oh, it's better. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. Sometimes my microphone disconnects a little bit and I don't notice, and so then I need someone to tell me that. Uh, okay. Good morning, darling Amber. Um, all right, the audio's better. Good, good. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, good morning, Emery. Hello to Damien Rice. Good to see you all. All right, I'm glad we got the audio fixed because that would have been very annoying otherwise. Ugh. So I'm going to be, so I'm working on this big video essay. I got to film that tomorrow. Got my schedule for today. Got to go to the gym, come home, do a big shower and wash my hair, my weekly hair washing. Although maybe I should, mm, was the weekly, yeah, I guess tomorrow does have to be my weekly hair washing. Because I'm like, I'm going out of town, but I'll have to, I guess I'll pack some travel size hair stuff with me. That's, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Um, so I'll show you guys some cool stuff and then we can do some journaling and, and sorry, I've got too many tabs open is the issue. And then after that, we can, uh, have a good time with some AI bots. I'm going to put two minute timer for us to journal in a bit. Do, do, do. Ba, 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 ba. So, RK's on the call right now. He should be back soon, but I'd also go, I'm like, that sucks. You're on a call at 7 a.m. 
<laughs> what? It's ridiculous. Um, it's early. It's early as shit right now, dude. Um, all right. So, guys, I put up some cool ass pictures on Instagram yesterday, and I feel like I gotta show them all off to you. Mainly, I so I put out yesterday. I put out a newsletter. Um announcing this new brand right here and that was very fun I put up I put up these new pictures check that out oh these are the ones with the stoner queer collab so shout out to it's go for hawk yourself in the chat she's up there somewhere shout out to y'all because it's just about a week we're gonna be doing this collab look at that What's so fun is that you guys watch me draw this art live on stream. Like, I was drawing this. Remember I even shared the screen and everything. Isn't that cool how we're all, uh, we all just collaborate and, like, go through these processes together live. I love that. Like, you guys watch me draw this live. So that's one of the shirts that's going to be available is this one. Um, and then also this hat and also this shirt. So that was, that was very fun. Um, so I know that Sarah created some reels. Let's see, is this, is it gonna, yeah, it's playing without audio. That's good because I know that it's gonna, it's gonna create, uh, it's gonna, well, I guess it doesn't matter if we're copyright claimed because a lot of times we use copyrighted movie trailers, so we don't monetize most of the time anymore. Um, but, yep. I love this reel. This is so cool. I can't get over it. I, I just love it so much. So, follow that that Instagram page. Oh, I should, I should link it in the chat. Follow, follow this page if you all haven't already, because I'm trying to grow the Instagram following on this so that I can, cause okay. Launch date is June 2nd. It's officially launching a week from this Friday. Boop. There's the link right there. I mean, obviously only follow it if you're actually interested in it, but if you are interested in it, give it a follow over there. And, uh, that's what, that's what I'm being working on. Um, oh, Darling Amber says, I'm going to be the Stoner Queer Artist collab after you. That's so exciting. Oh my God, I can't wait to see that. I love this artist collab idea. Uh, Michelle, the artist collab idea was great. I think that's fantastic. Because the more people you collaborate with, the better, right? That's like, it's all about collaboration in this world. So... Um, yeah, I think that's a great idea. I'm so excited to continue to see the, all the artist collabs. Good morning, Karis Creates. Um, Devastation says, it's very cool to watch the process from idea to product. I completely, I love that kind of thing. I love seeing that. And that's what I like about how we've been doing things on the show lately, is there's a lot of behind the scenes, like, watching ideas come to fruition. I think that's a lot of fun. My mom's here. Good morning, mom. Um, Kelly says, very exciting. Sarah's photography, it made it all pop too. Dude, I gotta show you guys some more of her photography. Her photography is so good. I'm just blown away by it. Oh, there's, there's Michelle. <laughs> Dude, thank you. Um, she says, it's something I've been dreaming of for a long time. Yeah, I, I think the I think the artist collab thing is really cool, and I'm really happy to be part of it this month. So, speaking of which, I've got some cool stuff on my own Instagram right now. I posted a lot on Instagram yesterday because uh, Sarah got the photos ready and you guys got stuff ready, uh, Michelle. So, as a result... Um, I was tagged in a bunch of stuff, but I got to show some of these. So here we go. So we've got, wait, there's the stoner queer one. Okay. These are the photos Sarah sent me yesterday. Look at these. Look at, look at this picture. I made this my Twitter profile picture cause I cannot get over how cool this looks. 
I look like I'm in some kind of like some like 70s Polaroid photo or something. I love this. <laughs> look at how cool this photo is. I just I love this one so much. Uh, I don't know what what editing Sarah did with the colors on this, but she made my lips look amazing. I look like I'm in like a old time movie or something. I can't get over it. So anyway, this photo I'm I'm in love with. And then that's another one. There's this this is a tunnel underpass like that people drive through it has this beautiful mosaic wall in my neighborhood. What's amazing too is that all of these photos we got in my neighborhood. We didn't have to go downtown or anything. We just, it was all walking distance, which I guess can dox me, but also I'm just saying I live in a beautiful neighborhood. Um, go faux hawk yourself says you look like a hipster supermodel. Thank you. <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> That's the goal right there. Yeah, I'm just, um, I'm obsessed with that right there. And then, yeah, this is from, this is from Stoner Queer. Um, look at these, this art collab stuff we've got going. Um, June feature artist. That's right. Me right there, right there. That's me. Um, boop, boop, boop. So I'm so excited for this art series. And then these were the new ones that Sarah just tagged me and that she had just finished editing. These color edits are so fun. I love seeing these, right? So we got that. Look, look at that. That's a cool picture. These are cool, cool as hell. I love these. So, <laughs> go fohawk yourself says, I'm proud of this post. Um, yeah, the posts are good. I like that. I think this one's cool. Uh, they're all cool. I like how I'm standing in a, a paint splatter over here. That's very fun. <laughs> So I'm very, guys, all good stuff's coming in June. I'm very excited for that. So that's going to be um, starting in June. We're going to have uh, my collab on their site. And then also, I'm, oh, I got my website. I'm going to show you guys this. I got my website finished yesterday. It's all ready to launch June 2nd. I'm going to show you guys this website. Got the website done, right? So I've got all my, um, I've got all my products on the shop page. Oh, I, I got this t-shirt. I just added a basic t-shirt. If anyone wants a basic t-shirt, I added that just for fun. So we've got, uh, we've got all the stuff here. And then I have a million, I have a million other designs that I just ordered samples for because I want to get like summer, uh, late summer and fall launches ready as well. So this is, I'm so happy with how this website looks. This is going to come out June 2nd. So this is our, our like shop page. I added a size guide. Here's the size guide. We got the size guide. I've got all the measurements for the different products. And then I have pictures of me where you can see the products clearly. And I have it listed with all of my sizes and measurements. So that way you can reference that if that helps you. And then I made the lookbook page, which I was so excited about. And I'm going to probably, I'm going to try to do one of these every season. Um, so these are all of Sarah's photos and I have them in a fun collage. I can't get over some of these, especially like I showed you guys some of these yesterday, but there's so much beautiful stuff in Chicago. We have so much art. So we've got all of this showing how you guys can look cool and do cool things in this. So that's my website. I finished it yesterday <laughs> and it's, it's ready to, oh, and then I, oh, I did, I did the, um, like I did the product photos. So like I've got the, the product photo for each thing and then added these. Now Tyler thinks maybe I've put too many photos on each product and it might be a lot to scroll through, which might be true. I might have to remove some of them, but I was having a lot of fun with it. Um, so now there's, yeah, there's all these photos to show off each product. 
not each one, some of them I didn't ha get a sample of, but like, like these and stuff. Because then it, 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 I don't know, I think it's cool. It shows, uh, shows the products in action. Maybe I'll wear one of these sneakers to the gym today. I don't know, maybe that's a bad idea. We'll see. I'll decide. Yeah. Um, Kara says this all looks great. Thank you. Michelle loves it. Valerie says it's a vibe. That's the goal. I want it to be, I want to, I want to have a vibe going here. Um, so there we go. Good morning, strange little lass. Uh, Valerie, oh, this is an interesting question. I'm wondering how you guys in the chat feel about this because I was I was torn on this. I had I had thought figure pros and cons to this idea, so I'm not sure. So here's what Valerie says. She says she says if you have real photos, use them over the mock-ups. It makes them feel more personal and less like stock. And I think that's a, that's a that's a valid point. Like I've thought about that, right? But then part of me feels like since I don't have a sample of every single product, right? Because like, if I know that the print is going to look good on the shoes, I don't need to get a print of every pair of shoes. I just can't afford to do that, right? <laughs> so, um, so I don't have it for every every single item. So because of that, part of me feels like, is it better to just let the site look more consistent? Cause, and it'll look more professional because there's consistency of how each item looks? Or would it look better to have some of the products be just this flat product image, but some of the main images on the shop page be, um, be the, the photos? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I'm curious. Hey, good morning. How are you? Good, you? Pretty good. Very slowly waking up. I'm exhausted this morning for some reason. I mean, have you tried not being? Oh, I forgot. I forgot to try not being exhausted. Thank you for the reminder. Yeah, usually when I'm really exhausted, I just choose to be awesome instead. I forgot to choose to be awesome today. I need to choose to be awesome. Um, what do you think about this? I'm trying to decide. If I have... So I have tons of photos of these products now, right? So my question is, for the main photo on the shop page, should I put in, um, should I have it be one of these photos, it, even if I don't have it for all of them? Because in my mind, I was like, consistency is more important. But then a, a lot of people are saying that having uh, the main photo be a photo like of it in action is better for some of them. So I don't know. I don't know. As opposed to just, like, the other ones having different angles of the stock photo? Well, yeah, because, like, for example, so, I don't have these. Although I sent you these last night. I sent you, I sent you these and, and these. I sent you two pairs of shoes. Okay. So, those are coming to your house in a couple weeks. Get excited. I'm, I'm so ecstatic. <laughs> yeah. Um... Sarah, I don't know if Sarah's here, but I sent Sarah a pair that haven't been haven't been listed yet, so she get those she'll get those early because so, when I was designing them, she liked them so much. So what's the problem that you're saying? So because I, I still haven't seen it when you're ho hovering over them, I see. Pictures. Oh, there's no problem right now, right? So the the thing is, okay, so you see how these like on the shop page, it's all the same type of picture, right? It's all just a picture of the product with no background like that. Yeah. So. For some of these products, right? I have uh, I have photos like this. That yeah. when you have you like, have photos like this. So some so people are saying that for the ones I have it like that, I should make that the main image instead of having it look like this. However, then it'll be inconsistent. So I don't know. I'm not sure either. I I don't know consumer shopping habits. I I like it I as it is right now though. So Okay, thanks. Yeah. I would, um yeah, I got the size guide done. 
Look at the size guide. Got that done. And then I got, I made these fun photo collages to show it all off in action. And then each, um, yeah, because like when you click on the product, each one you can see the additional photos. But a lot of people were saying maybe the shop page should have it automatically display that photo just right here. So, but I don't know. Um, let's see what the chat says. Um, Go for Hawk yourself says, I do like that it looks consistent by having the personal photos and actual product description. Oh, it is in the product description page. So like, for example, if you click on this, see, it's all, it's all right in order. It's all right there. Um, boop, boop, boop. Look at you modeling your own shit. Yeah. Model. I had so much fun. I had so much fun while I was showing everyone this picture. I look like. I look like so, um, I look like I'm in a 70s music video or something. Like, look at this. I can't get over how cool that picture looks it's that Sarah awesome. edited. It looks it's, awesome. I look so cool. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> um, let me see what y'all have to say. And then we will, we will do some journaling. Rock you. We will rock you. Exactly. Um, so, Darling Amber says, I'm holding off on logic my brand until I can order samples and get real photos. It's going to be pricey to do so. Yeah, that was the most expensive part of the process because having to order all the samples. Although, I'd rather wear the samples of these clothes than, like, most other clothes because I designed clothes that I personally like. So, now it's, like, exactly what I want. So, I'm in a good place with that. Regina George's flaws. Exactly. Emery now wants to do an art collab with Stoner Queer too. You should. I think they have a lot of spots open. I'm not going to speak for them though. Michelle uh, is in the chat, but yeah, you should fill out the thing on their website. Um, let's see. Okay. Yes, I agree with this devastation. You could have people send photos wearing the products. That's yes. I know I am going to do that because I last night sent out items to my influencer friends. <laughs> I sent out a couple items to people. Be right back. Okay. Um, yeah, so I do have the photos in the actual product page, yes. Um, Yeah, that, oh, the Valerie, that's already what I have. So, right, like, for example, yeah, oh, I just meant on the main product page. On the main product page, I wanted it to look consistent, but when you actually click on the product to order it, it, it pulls up all the photos of me in the product. Like, this one. This, the main photo from the product page, but then you see the photos of it in action. Same thing with, like, you know, the shirts as well. So I think that works. Oh, Damien. Yeah. It says keep blank background for the main page, but definitely be sure to include real world pictures. For yeah, that's what I did. That's, I completely agree with that. I think that I agree. I hope that eventually I can have photos for every single product. I just don't have every product, but yeah, like you click on this one and then while you're, it's, it's all right here. Yep, wearing my own merch is as boss babies against what I'm doing right now. I'm wearing my own merch right here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <sighs> Slip. Yep, that's me. All I was right. I was talking to the market. Oh, of course you were. I literally was. Um. <laughs> uh, I was just like slut. Yeah, the market's being kind of slutty. You're right, it is. All it does is bounce up and down. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, Michelle, I sent you the unedited ones on Discord last night. Um, all right. So yesterday we were playing with ChatGPT, so I figured we could do that again today. That sounds good. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, do you need me to get it up or do you have it up? 
Um, I right. just could, could you do it? I just have a lot going on on my screens right now. That's okay. I do too. And I don't want to accidentally share. Okay, so I, I have things that I don't want to share accidentally. With. No, I understand. I understand. I just have all of my. I have like, yeah. No, I'm getting it up right now. But no, well, I have, I have like 25 tabs for this Ron DeSantis video that I'm scripting, which is fine. Doesn't matter. Is this? I have to log back into ChatGPT. I haven't used it in a little while. Okay, I'll just. Uh, I got it. I got log it out of this. I can log back in later. No, dude, I got it open. Um. So we've got all my romance novels outlines over here, guys. And we also have, uh, what's the last thing I did over here? Oh yeah, there was that one Friday night that I was stuck by myself. So I just used chat GPT to talk to me in Polish. Oh, someone launched an app using chat GPT for sure. On uh, it's like, want to learn a language with someone? AI bot can talk to you now. So someone definitely just like try, turned this idea that, that you would using ChatGPT for into an app. That maybe I'll get that app. That's a good idea for an app because I don't need to get that app a charge. It costs money. Oh well, then okay. Yeah, no, everyone is um, <laughs> everyone's using it to profit. Got it. Because what I enjoy doing with ChatGPT is I'll talk to ChatGPT in Polish, and then when I have questions, because sometimes when I'm learning things on Duolingo, I have questions about certain rules that I can't understand. So then I will say, okay, ChatGPT, talk to me in English now, and explain to me the difference between these two verb forms and how I know when to use them. And it'll do it, and I feel like it's helped me a lot. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. So is, this your only, is this your only Polish chat you got going on? In chat GPT, yeah. I mean, I sometimes try to talk to real people, but if you mean in the in the bot, yes. I'm sorry, I mentioned the bot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my only Polish chat in the bot. Lesbian cheerleader romance. Yeah, I'm working on a lesbian cheerleader romance. Um, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta write that one for the fall. I gotta finish my summer romances. I got off track. Camp counselor romance. Yeah, I got the the camp counselor romance is almost done. Um, this is I got an outline for it here. The camp counselor romance. I'm like, um, I think it was gonna be eight chapters, and I've got like four done or something. I gotta finish that one. It's gonna finish the camp counselor romance, and then I gotta write the lesbian. Oh, I gotta write. Uh, I gotta write gay watch. I gotta write the lifeguard romance. I'm gonna cut you off with one thing. Lesbians. Yes. <laughs> as you should as you should yes um yeah i've got to write the um the lifeguard romance and my fourth of july romance i gotta get the fourth of july romance written this month i got behind i was on such a roll with pumping out romances really fast and now i'm travel. i've been traveling so much that i haven't haven't been getting them done as quick feel like there's some sort of slant rhyme in 4th of July with, like, fourth time with two guys or something like that. Oh, yeah, maybe. That's a good idea. Yeah, the 4th of July romance is two single dads. I gotta get these single dads together on the 4th of July. Okay. It's called, the the story that I, or the title right now is called The Fireworks Between Us. Okay. That yeah. sounds, that sounds They're cute. They're gonna make out during the fireworks. Oh, yeah, they're gonna have a Fourth of July barbecue. Two single dads. One of them's divorced. One of them has their wife died, and they've they're neighbors who have helped each other raise each other's kids. And then on a Fourth of July, they fall in love. Um, Good for them. Yeah, everyone has very fast bisexual awakenings in my novels. Cause why wouldn't they? That's the fun of it all. Sometimes right. it just clicks, Sometimes especially when an author just... has you, uh, forces you to come out that quickly. Yeah, exactly. Daddy, how do you feel if these characters are real and you're just like forcing them out of the closet super quickly? I don't know, man, because... see, but you're also giving the... them happy endings. So here's the thing. As, as we all know, I have a book coming out called Conversations with My Puppet. This is a conversation that I will regularly have with my puppet, where Sean Boston, the puppet... We'll say, Savvy, how do you feel about the fact that you got me canceled online and destroyed my entire career? 
And I'll be like, Sean, without me, you wouldn't exist. And he'll be like, well, why did you bring me into existence if you're just here to make me suffer? And I'm like, yeah, okay. he's getting a redemption arc. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. We should really burn him. <laughs> so that's, that's the kind of things the puppet says to me. So I'm over here like, okay, well, you wouldn't exist without me. So I don't know if you have room to talk. Wow, you sound like a mom. <laughs> <laughs> I can bro I brought you into this world, I'll take you out of it. <laughs> just yeah. wailing on your kid and then the kid just being like, Stop, I'll be better, I swear. And then you're just like, I brought you into this world, you owe me everything. I don't think it owes me what am I supposed to do? Okay, so from now on I'm gonna write a story. You know what? Let's use the bot to to, to work this out. Um okay. Sometimes I feel guilty about making my characters suffer because what if in some alternate universe they're real people? Dude, this is like chalk zone. What if there's what if there's a chalk zone but for all the for all the dude. Okay. Erotica chalk zone. What if there's a chalk zone for all the erotica characters and they're in a support group? For all the weird sex that the authors have made them do. That main character in Chalk Zone definitely like made out with at least one Chalk character. Right? Okay, yeah, like what's what's the what's the ethics around that? Like if you draw a character on the chalkboard and erase the character so they go into Chalk Zone, and then you made the character just to make out with, like, is 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 that unethical? I don't know. I have no idea. It's like sometimes when I have ar arguments, like back when I was not eating meat, I would have arguments about how like it's not right to kill the animals and people would be like, well, the animals were only bred on these farms in the first place so that they could be eaten so they wouldn't even exist for that. And I'm like, well, just because you brought something into existence doesn't mean you can cause it suffering. Yeah, I was gonna say that that's not that's one of the worst arguments I've ever heard. Oh, I hear I heard that Word. constantly. <laughs> At this point, I'm like, yeah, I, I eat meat. I just feel bad about it because I used to have too many health issues. Like that's what I just that's that's me. I'm like I admit that it's that it, I shouldn't do it. Um, I don't have an issue with people eating meat. I just have an issue with that argument. That argument's extremely stupid, right? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so does that mean you can like? have a baby and do whatever you want with it because they only exist because of you. Like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Um, so that's, that's, I think, uh, that I think erotica chalk zone is going to have, is going to have some of this. Um, yeah. Okay. Maybe God is real and God is just fucking with us. Right. Like is, God, are we all just characters? Yeah. You're I thought you were about to quote Spy Kids too. <laughs> oh, Steve Buscemi and Spy I, Kids I too. thought you were about to quote Spy Kids Oh, too. I need to upload that as one of our clips to pull up. Because we just need Steve Buscemi. You think God stays in heaven because he lives in fear of what he's created here on Earth? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what a beautiful line that just came out of nowhere. Um, out of nowhere. Everyone knows Spy Kids 2 is... A great movie with just I don't even know what to add to that dude I love Spy Kids too yeah. it's a solid sequel it really is yeah uh, yeah I even like Spy Kids 3 B I don't know I saw it in the movie theater and it really wasn't worth it but I'd I have to rewatch it I, I, I rewatched it actually a couple years ago on DVD and, um... You didn't like, uh, Elijah Wood's, uh, two-second cameo? I don't remember it, honestly. You don't remember it? I like how, um... He how was, the, like, the legendary character who could lead everyone to the highest level, and he shows up for one second and gets zapped at the door and dies. <laughs> Wait, I do remember that, you're right! <laughs> I forgot about that He's story like, right now! He, goes through this door and <laughs> get our treasure and just dies! <laughs> Um, yeah, I like how the grandpa is played by Wrath of Khan. I think that's, that's a, a fun role for him to play. He has Wrath. Yes. 
All right. Sometimes I feel guilty about making me su my character suffer because what if in some alternate universe they're real people? Let's see what the bot has to say. It's understandable to how these characters exist within the realm of your imagination and are not real individuals in any alternate universe or real. How do you know that? Oh, they're giving you advice. They explore the purpose <laughs> behind the suffering. Okay, so I can make others suffer as long as I explore the purpose. Okay, so it's okay. It's okay. We can. And with that in mind, let's do a. Uh... Yeah, the best part of Spy Kids is Uncle Machete. Definitely. I want to watch the Machete movies. Guilt over character suffering. <laughs> okay, we got to watch the Machete movies, dude. Okay. We got to do that. Um, okay. I love Spy Kids so much. It is such a, a, a fun series of movies. It could just be because Carla Gugino is top MILF. That woman is one of the hottest moms in this world. And with that being said, Antonio Banderas is, is an attractive man, too. He's just a hot couple. They're such a hot couple! Oh my god. I watched that movie and I'm like, oh my god. Oh my god. If those two leaked the sex tape, I would be in heaven. This is the, hot, the hottest couple I've ever seen in my life. Okay. Every time the mom walks away, I'm like, I hate to see you go, but I'd love to watch you leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it does all right so we're gonna make a degrassi rpg like we were doing yesterday i want to make a choose your own adventure what are game. templates what's the thing next to them is that a where what do you have like what's the circle next to your templates under march camp under camp counselor romance Oh, I don't know. What is that? Yeah, why does it say K? Ooh, I've never seen this before. Oh, you can put things in different... I see. So you choose a category like marketing. Frameworks. Oh, it, it'll put it... I get it. It puts it... if It's like if you're doing it for work. Understood. Yeah, that's boring. I want to make a choose-your-own-adventure game set in the Degrassi universe. It's... We're in Toronto in the year 2004. My character goes to Degrassi High and... Oh, Valerie knows a character from Degrassi, an actor on Degrassi. You do? Which one? I feel like everyone Canadian knows someone yeah, on Degrassi or has been on Degrassi. This is just a yeah, Canada staple. Thing ever. Yeah. But do you hey, know, know anyone know from on, Chris what? We know that for someone on Degrassi too. Yeah, we do. That's true. Drew's mom Oh damn, Drew's oh, mom she was cool. She was a jerk for a while. She was. When she came to school and she started off with, like, the anti-hazing shit, which she was in the right for. But I remember as a kid, I was like, wow, what a party pooper. <laughs> she hated Dude, everyone. Okay, but the hazing on the football team was nasty and Drew was, was bullying a guy out of the closet. Completely agree. It was it was awful. But then over. Drew, I, I, that's what I didn't get, because I was like, Drew is over here trying to bully a guy out of the closet in order to, to, get, to get starting to quarterback. Get, <laughs> to get starting quarterback. However, Drew also has a younger brother that is trans, and so he understands the gravity of this, which actually makes it even worse, honestly. <laughs> because you don't even know at that point that Drew has a trans little brother until, like, Adam gets introduced later on. I just appreciate the Drew arc a bit because we definitely, I feel like we kind of saw the birth of a himbo. Like he oh, definitely. Off, Drew became he a himbo. Started off as he was a bully at cool first, kid. dude. He was mean. Yeah. And then he became such a himbo who just could not do anything right. And, and you started feeling bad for him because yeah. he, he went full. Wait, I, I know exactly what to say. This, this is Drew and his brother. You have one stupid son and you got a gay son. <laughs> That's so accurate. <laughs> yes. But remember, dude, remember they killed Adam? 
They fucking yeah, killed him. Why. Well, I remember looking at around the time the episode came out, I was looking at like interviews from it because I was like, what the fuck did they do? And they were like, we did think it was important that we had our first transgender character on the show. At the same time, we thought it was more important to tell a story about the dangers of texting and driving. And I was like, you what? <laughs> <laughs> And they and they killed him. And then it came out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, and they killed him texting a uh, the the super Christian girl who didn't even accept him for a while. Well, I like that the Christian girl did accept. Dude, she was willing to go to conversion therapy over him because her mom was like, "I do not see this your your trans boyfriend as a real man, and because of that, you are now a lesbian if you date him. So you need to go to conversion therapy." And she was like, "Okay, fine, I'll go to conversion therapy, mom." And then she was like, "Adam, we have to break up. I'm going to conversion therapy." <laughs> she she was like weirdly chill about it, and then he was like, "What? <laughs> what a wild, what a wild plot." Could you imagine her going there and just being like, so why are you here? Well, I have a boyfriend. And they're like, what? Well, I have a boyfriend and I have a girl. Oh, okay. So, yeah, but... My boyfriend has a period. My boy. Oh, okay. I, I remember that being a big plot point where, like, Adam's tampons fell out and then she was just like, boys don't have periods. Wow. What a judgmental little bitch. Their relationship ended up being pretty cute, though. And then yeah, finally, <laughs> finally, they were back together, and he was so ready to go see her, and then he died. Yeah, just out of nowhere. Hit a tree. <laughs> out of nowhere. Dude, the, Degrassi... But if you watch Degrassi, like, way back in the day, there would always be, like, the one character who died. They started really going a little feral with killing the characters <laughs> later on. <laughs> <laughs> Did I? Is it? Is it? A, I, I thought I say it pretty regularly. I, I I love that you say it. Oh, okay. I think it's a okay. I don't know. It's such a. It's such a funny but it just applied to a lot of things lately. I guess it's such a funny thing to call people. And that's what they did, though. Okay, like in the eighties, they killed. Claude. He was the one character they killed. You couldn't call him Claude, you had to call him Claude because he's Canadian and he was very into that. Um, he was the, like, the only character killed in the in the original series. And it was a big deal because he shot himself in the face in the school bathroom stall and then oh, Snake no. walked in. Snake, yeah, and then he and Eli went full circle with that one. Oh my god, that was such a beautiful moment. The Snake walked in and he was like, Half, that's what he said to Joey. He's like, half of his face just wasn't as he's going through his trauma. That was the, They made the death impactful because there was one. Later on, the show went on too long and they're like, let's just let's just kill everyone. Yeah, we became Dynasty Warriors. <laughs> let's, let's, this character's been here a while. Let's kill them. We have an idea for a plot about something random. Let's kill them. This character wants to be on a different show, this actor, so let's kill them. No, I like how they killed them. JT, so JT's actor wanted to be, he he just wanted to go to college instead of continuing to act, so they were like, alright, let's, I mean, these kids were like a, a week away from graduation, they could have just had him graduate, all these characters were about to get written off, but they were like, let's just have him get killed <laughs> out of nowhere, <laughs> let's just murder him! <laughs> yeah. And his death was so dumb, too, I was ready no, for it to be... <laughs> Dude, the Degrassi vs. Lakers beef is some of my favorite. Oh my god. I Okay, my favorite is that the guy from Lakers who killed JT was named Drake. So you have this scene of of the of the of Drake before he was Drake being like Drake's a psycho. So I just love that. We just need to put that clip into things of Jimmy from Degrassi played by Drake as a as a child. Saying Drake is a real psycho, <laughs> putting like I think that's a good foreshadowing. What a story, Mark! What a story, Mark! Dude, the, they didn't I thought they 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 let her uh, just <laughs> her plot was stupider though. Like if later they were like, okay, we're done with killing people, so instead we're just gonna make them wildly successful as teenagers and have them yep. get written off to go somewhere and be wildly successful. And I'm yep. like, that that's even dumber. Okay, just kill them instead. That one was kind of dumb because like 
everything fell apart so quickly. Just out of nowhere, Peter gets addicted to meth. I remember that he's like, so, well, okay, it all started when those stupid rich Americans came to town. The stupid rich American incest twins that were definitely fucking each other. Those two came to town and were like, we're here in Canada for whatever reason. And then they were like, we're super rich. We're like wealthy as hell. Come to our, our house and go to our weird rich people parties. And then Peter goes to their weird rich people party and they're like, here, do some cocaine. And he was like, I'll do all the cocaine. And they're like, just kidding, it was meth. And now Peter's like, in the street. Like, what a weird show. I love this weird show. It was like a video game where it just flashed on screen. You are now addicted to meth. Yeah. So he's, like, calling up his friends, like, guys, I'm on meth, help! And they're like, Peter, why did you do meth? And he's like, I just thought it was cocaine! And they're like, Peter, why'd you do cocaine? Like, <laughs> Peter was such an idiot, dude. I can't get over how dumb Peter was. Also, I hate that they gave him redemption opportunities, because, like, he crossed the line so Peter, many Peter's before. initial arc on the show is leaking nudes of a minor. That's, like, how he in, he gets started on the show. And then he gets Sean arrested. Peter is such a douche, but his mom was the principal, so he got away with everything. Meanwhile, his mom expelled Spinner from school because... Oh, Peter planted drugs on... Uh... Peter planted drugs in yeah, Sean's locker drugs. to yeah. get him arrested just because he and Sean were dating the same girl. Yeah. And he was He's like, awful. I want Emma all to myself, so I'm gonna get Sean arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Peter was so chaotic. I hated him so I much. Hated him. Peter was the fucking worst. Um, Karis, you better believe I watched the fucking Zit Remedy. The Zit Remedy was my favorite band all around in college. I had a Zit Remedy poster on my wall and a Zit Remedy sticker on my laptop. And yes, the Zit Remedy. So Joey Jeremiah and Snake and Wheels. Their music has their one song that they made has been stuck in my head for 30 years too. Don't worry. Trying to click yeah, Peter yeah. does belong in the trash. What an awful dude. Um, Alright, so my character goes to Degrassi High and is the new student. Um, this school is full of over-the-top drama and the most extreme scenarios possible. Let's play. Alright. Sure, let's play. You wake up on your first day as a new student at Degrassi High in Toronto in 2004. As you step into the hallways, you notice a group of students whispering and casting <laughs> Degrassi drama begins and casting curious glances in your direction. What do you do? Option one, approach the group and introduce yourself. Ignore the group or look for someone else who seems... Oh, we're definitely approaching the, the weird group. Definitely. Dude, definitely. you didn't do hit points. Oh, shit! There's, How do I fix that? There's no health bar. Oh, wait, it's Emma. I mean, I mean Emma, Manny, Toby, and JT right on the first day. That's great. Okay. Um, I'll... Let, we'll add that. We'll do the option and I'll say... And I'll, what do I want to add? Uh... Health bar. Add, add, add a health bar and give yourself some money. A health bar and give me hundred Canadian dollars in my pocket. Um, okay, wait. Okay, so. Okay, why does Emma have vibrant red hair? Whatever, I'll deal with it. So she says, hey there, new kid. I'm Emma. Maybe Welcome to Degrassi High. What's your name? <laughs> you introduce yourself and shake hands with Emma. The rest of the group introduces themselves as Manny, Toby, and JT. They seem friendly and interested in getting to know you. So what brings you to Degrassi? Are you ready for the drama and excitement? <laughs> Emma's so self-aware in this universe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like by the end, like, they all are very self-aware. Like, <laughs> for weird shit. Um, okay, so are we gonna sh oh yeah, like, option one, I want to share my reason for coming to Degrassi. So, because I'm curious what my reason is. Like, did I just move towns for some reason, or... Alright. 
Let's see if this works. You explained to Emma and the group that you moved to Toronto and enrolled at Degrassi because your parents got a job transfer. You mentioned that you're excited to experience the drama. The drama. <laughs> That's Emma says, well, you've come to the right place. Degrassi never disappoints when it comes to drama. We'll show you the ropes and help you settle in. Okay, dude, I think I might. Oh, this is so accurate, but I forgot to add the health bar. This is not wanting to add it. Oh, wait. Oh, it does say I'll add a virtual health bar. Okay, great. As, uh, I'll add a virtual health bar to keep track of your character's well-being and reflect the choices you make and the consequences they bring. Let's say you have a hundred Canadian dollars in your pocket to start with. Okay. Emma says, all right, new kid, let's head to our first class together. We have English first. Mr. Radich is a tough teacher. Oh, by 2004. Hey. Radich was promoted to principal in like 2001. So I don't even know why Radich is, is, is an English teacher here. He hasn't been an English teacher since like the early 90s, but whatever. Just let him be. Okay, I'll let Radich be. Radich has been through a lot of trauma having seen Claude's face in the bathroom, too. Okay. Um, Skip it. He sucks. Explore. Let's explore. Okay. Also, I think you just have to do three, yeah. Alex, we're exploring the schools. Oh, an open door leading to the music room. There's a group of students huddled around a guitar. Um... Yeah, let's let's play an instrument. You should start a band. I'm a, we're gonna start a band. A drum, is it one of them Craig? No, just band member one. Band member, dude. Come on, name him Craig. Hey, um, new kid. New kid. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna play an instrument. And also, I ask the band member for his name, and he says it's Craig. <laughs> inputting Craig. Nice chops, new kid! You've got some skills! We could definitely use you in the talent show! Hey. Craig... Alright, I'm hanging out with Craig. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna go get... Craig and I are gonna have a snack in the cafeteria. Oh... I thought Emma was in class. Why is she eating a snack in the cafeteria, too? <laughs> you skipped when you did. No one, no one went to bed. Wait, oh, I should have... Play one. Emery says, play Wonderwall. Um, I mean, I did choose the bassoon in real life. I played the bassoon for eight years, so... Maybe... Maybe that's what I'm gonna play. Dude, Craig's band needs a jazz bassoonist. Dude, you know who else plays the bassoon? Max, Max Keeble. Keeble. Yeah, I knew that's what you were gonna say. <laughs> Max Keeble. Max Keeble plays the bassoon, and he hits his crush with "bassoon you later" <laughs> or "see you bassoon." He hits her with a pun. He does, and I was like, "Dude, that would have worked on me," because I played the bassoon. <laughs> yeah, but she was flute first chair. She. Oh, it's different when you're flute first chair. Yeah. I would have never hit on the first chair flute that? girl way out of my league. Or I think was she, she clarinet? I don't No, I think Max Keeble's friend was clarinet. Okay, then, then the hot girl was, was clarinet, too. I'm, I'm going to call her hot girl because I forgot what her name was. I, I don't remember her name either. Um, Dude, Ashley, or maybe, I don't know, is Craig dating Manny or Ashley? Oh, it's 2004. This is the year when he's dating them both at the same time and not telling them because Manny's pregnant. <laughs> Wait, no, Manny got her abortion already. Um... So, I, I, okay, Emma and Craig, all of them are at the, are, we're all having a meal together. Um, uh, yeah, two. And also, I tell Craig that I can join his band as a jazz bassoonist. Yeah, Karis, I agree. This is like, it's like when we tried the dungeon AI thing. It didn't really work, but, um, I like the idea, so. Yeah, I wish dungeon AI worked a little Dude, better. Dude, Craig is so nice. Craig's like a jazz bassoonist. That's definitely unique. We've never had one in the band before. I like your style, new kid. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> Imagine Craig being this nice in real life. I thought he was kind of nice. Craig was kind of nice. He was also... He wanted to sleep with you. Craig had a lot of trauma. He was dealing with a lot. Yeah. He, Craig he was, was a ball of... Was he actively being abused at this point? No. Wait, I think... That was a couple years ago. He's over it. 
<laughs> he got over that child he's, a, he's over his child abuse okay <laughs> He's over his mom dying of cancer and his child abuse from his dad. And he's eating the shit out of him. Yeah. He's over all of that. <laughs> um, Craig says, we have rehearsal after school today. We should, you should come and bring your bassoon. Oh, I'm definitely going. I'm definitely going. Okay. Oh, I'm okay. definitely gonna skip school the rest of the day, and I'm gonna I'm exploring the school. <laughs> I'm gonna explore the school, see what's up. All right. Oh, I can audition for Romeo and Juliet. Oh hell yeah, I'm auditioning for Romeo and Juliet. Who am I gonna get to kiss? You're doing all the extracurricular. I'm doing, and this is just like what high school was really like for me. This is great. This is the most realistic Degrassi scenario of all time. Um, oh, I am gonna go to audition for the school play, definitely. I hope Craig doesn't get too mad at me and try to fuck up my entire life because I missed the band practice. <laughs> Excited by the prospect. Oh, I'm definitely- I'm gonna blow off Craig and go to drama. <laughs> Who needs friends? Who needs friends? I, I'm gonna involved. be the most dramatic bitch at this school. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah. All right. His new All right. says everyone knows classes are uh, the most <laughs> class, class of Degrassi. Um, I'll say one, but also name. Club member one Liberty. You're 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 adding Liberty to Drama Club. <laughs> Liberty was already in Drama Club. That's where she and JT first got together. They were doing that one uh, vampire play, and Emma had to kiss someone during it. But Emma had just got got a rea from oh, God, giving God, Jam blow job in their feet. <laughs> And then the lead refused to kiss her. He wasn't gonna kiss her because she she was full of STDs because she sucked Jay's <laughs> dick. <laughs> he was just like, follow my lead. Dude, Emma acted like she was such a moral person. Like, she was so morally superior to everyone. And then as soon as Sean left the school, because remember, Sean left because there was a school shooting and he was traumatized from it. He so he went, with his family. he went back to live with his family. And she had been dating him this whole time. And then as soon as he leaves for that, she goes and sucks his best friend's dick in a van <laughs> and gets an STD from it. What a bitch! This show is so much. It's so much. Um, Liberty says, I'm Liberty, by the way. It's great to have you. Auditions can be nerve-wracking, but with the right preparation and mindset, you'll do great. Wow, everyone is so supportive at this school. This is amazing. Yeah, nothing bad could ever happen at Degrassi. Uh, let's see. Okay, Liberty and I are gonna prepare a scene together. We're gonna Liberty and I are gonna kiss in this scene. Valerie says it sounds like a normal Canadian high school. I mean, this version of it does. This sounds like a normal American high school too. There's there's nothing insane happening yet. Yeah, you gotta do something insane already. Come on, let's add something insane. I don't just want to watch someone go to high school. Right, I feel like I'm playing the Sims University expansion pack when I was in college, and I was like, why does my character need to go to class on time? I have to go to class on time in real life. This is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, hold on. I'm gonna start this over. Because we need a health bar. Um, I'm gonna give it the same... I'm gonna add more to the to this. 
Okay, we're gonna do a new one. You even said I want the most extreme over the top scenarios. The fuck, yeah. ChatGPT. Um, give me a health bar, and also a hundred Canadian dollars in my pocket. Wait, okay, so my character goes to Degrassi High and is the new student. Today is the day that Rick brought the gun to school. Oh, I can't say that. Jet GPT won't let me do that. Ah! Um, Just say it's also, it happens to be purge night in Canada. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it also happens to be purge night in Canada. Let's try that. <laughs> <laughs> sure! Yes. Degrassi the Purge. There we go, Degrassi the Purge universe! <laughs> On this particular night, it's Purge Night in Canada. The streets are filled with chaos and extreme scenarios. Um, Alright, am I going to a party at Emma's house? You're or am absolutely I going... going to a party. You're going out on Purge Night. <laughs> Okay, or am I going through the hallways and stumbling upon a heated confrontation between two rival gangs? <laughs> this is already so much better. <laughs> so much better. <laughs> the first one was like, how about you just actually spend a day going to high school and doing the normal things you would have done in real life? And this one's like, okay, fine, we'll have violence. <laughs> violence. Choose violence. <laughs> Choosing violence. Okay, let's do a scenario A because there's dangerous individuals at the party. Oh, it's the Montreal boys. Remember when the Montreal boys showed up to, I forget whose party, but it was a group and they're like, we're the Montreal boys and Jay somehow knew them and he was like, no, not the Montreal boys. <laughs> they decided to attend a party at Emma's house. The students are lively as students... All right, students from Degrassi gathered to have a good time. However, the party takes an unexpected turn when a group of dangerous individuals crashes the event. How is it an unexpected turn? It's purge night. It's purge night. Where? What else would happen? Confront the dangerous. Oh, no, I'm definitely. I'm gonna fight the. I'm gonna fight. Fight the Montreal boys. You decide to confront the dangerous individuals and defuse the situation. You approach them cautiously. Try to keep a calm demeanor. As you approach, you notice one of them is brandishing a weapon. <laughs> All right. Engage in peaceful conversation. Nope. Take it Call for it help. Is. Nope. Yep. There we go. <laughs> See, this purge night idea was brilliant. You, you completely saved this. What the- just get to the fight already! I will- <laughs> Hey! I'm trying to fight them! Thank you! <laughs> With determination, you speak up firmly expressing your disapproval. What if the leader of the dangerous work? group- what do you say? I said, what if that worked and they walked away? What if I was like, I do not approve of you being here with your weapon brandishing. And he was like, oh, sorry. Never mind, we're good. He's <laughs> up to us. Sorry, let me- I'll put my- I'll put my weapon away. No hard feelings, guys. Like, imagine! Just headbutt him. <laughs> A, and I headbutt him. Yes. How dare you purge on purge night. With a burst of courage, you headbutt the leader of the nice. dangerous group, catching him off guard. The impact momentarily stuns him, creating an opportunity for you to assert your position. The leader stumbles backward, his cronies momentarily frozen in surprise. However, he quickly recovers and glares at you with intensified anger. Your health bar is currently at full capacity, representing your initial hundred health points. Alright, so I, do I fight back with all my strength? Uh, yes, I don't even- oh, or I could look at tools or objects that might aid me in the fight. Ooh, what tools or objects are at Emma's house? A chainsaw. <laughs> Sp uh, Spike's vibrator, for sure. <laughs> Various party decorations, a glass bottle. Okay, so I've got, like, a Canadian beer bottle that I'm gonna smash someone's head with. Ignore the glass bottle? No, you're gonna use No, the I am gonna smash somebody with the bottle. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Guys, we're definitely going to continue this tomorrow because even though I have to um, I have to head to the gym soon, but we're going to continue this tomorrow. Okay, here we go. You grip the bottle tightly, ready to wield it oh. if necessary. The dangerous group takes notice. Their expressions momentarily change. Okay. All right, guys, we're in a good the the we're right in the heat of it. This is a good stopping point. Um Hey, Liana! Smash their heads up once I'm loose. <laughs> so tomorrow we will continue this this uh, RPG that ChatGPT has named Degrassi Purge Adventure. <laughs> we will continue Degrassi. Oh my god, it's a bottle of maple syrup! <laughs> it's a giant glass bottle of maple syrup. <laughs> That's a great idea. I love that. All right, we're going to continue Degrassi Purge Night uh, tomorrow. <laughs> I gotta do the gym. Can't skip leg day. I will see you guys again then. In the meantime, have a great start to your day. Love y'all. Bye.